Welcome to the Debrief Podcast with Matthew Stephen Brown. This episode contains content about marriage and sex that might not be suitable for some younger listeners. Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Debrief. I am super pumped to have some of my good friends, the Millers. It is Miller time for all of our (laughs) alcoholics out there listening. Uh, Maybe they will change your life when it comes to your marriage. Super glad that you guys are with us on The Debrief. And I am just so pumped because you guys know I've been praying about marriages at San Luis Church. Uh, Pastor Andrew Bogan Wright led our marriage ministry so well for years. He took Love the job him. over at Moreno Valley, leading Sandals Church Moreno Valley. He's doing an excellent job. Mm. But I've just really had this burden for, okay, what's going on with marriages? So many marriages have really felt the pressure of COVID, the pressure of finances, inflation, just just kind of the pressures of modern life. And I just really started praying and God put you guys on my heart. Mm. And you guys have, you know, a great um, just profession. You have great job, great careers. And I was like, could you please consider, you know, coming and work for us? And so, um, I tried not to guilt you. Hopefully it was about God, but just kind of share your guys' story, um, about marriage ministry and then why you came to Sandals and, you know, try not to get in a fight as you share. (laughs) Not today. Yeah. Uh, I would say, well, first of all, the, the marriage story for us is we both come from highly dysfunctional homes. Okay. Lots of people can relate to that. Uh, 13 divorces between both sides of the family. Everybody's divorced except us. Wow. Just parents and siblings. That's it. Not extended family. Doesn't mean we're superheroes or amazing. It means we worked hard at keeping God at the center, uh, which is not always easy. Um, and, and we had to work that out. And if we could do it. It, so can yeah. the people Amen. that we True work story. with, right? Uh, so, so marriage really for us has become the thing we can't not talk about. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's, it's the thing that mm-hmm. we talk about when we're on dates together. Mm-hmm. We talk about us, our marriage, what we're doing. Uh, we talk with other couples. Anytime somebody says, Hey, got a question about marriage. We're, we're all in, we're all about it. So it really is that thing we can't not talk about. And then we were winding down from one thing when you called and gave us some sad puppy eyes. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> uh, honestly, it feels like such a God thing, mm-hmm. the way that timing just dovetailed so perfectly into what we were, uh, what we were exiting out of, and then we're really stoked to be here. Yeah, I think one of the things that just constantly reminds me that God is with us is when the Lord puts somebody on my heart, and there's really two two important things for um, success in ministry. And so, so one is calling, and then two is gifting. Mm. And you guys have both, and that's Thank what you. I love about you is. Um, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not pastors that are like, yeah, you know, marriage is important. So we're going to do that. It's no, no, no. We feel called to this and our Mm -hmm. pastoral ministry is marriage and this is our heart. And, uh, for those listening, that's what you guys were doing before I asked you to do this. So like, this isn't like, Hey, you're doing a, I'd like you to do B. And just as I really prayed and I was like, God, I have no shot at these two financially at all. (laughs) And, um, but I just feel led to have a conversation and we sat in my office and, you know, you guys were kind of going one way and I was like, okay, here, <laughs> right. here's what I feel like the Lord is asking me. And this is how you get people. Just pray about it. <laughs> yeah, just go, go before the Lord and, and pray about it. And you guys did. And so here's what I'm super si- excited. If, if there's anybody listening that you have a passion and a calling for marriage, mm-hmm. this is your passion. This is your ministry. You want to help people invest in the most important relationship outside of their relationship with God. Yes. So God's number one. Marriage is number two. Mm-hmm. Marriage was God's idea. Um, you can, um, you know, give the Millers a little time as they get baptized into staff life, but, um, they're going to be looking for coaches, team leaders, because you guys can't be everywhere all at once. And so, you know, if this is your calling, um, how maybe could they get in touch with you or the marriage ministry? How could they do that? And, Great question. and to be fair, we don't need a little time. We're ready. We're okay, ready okay, 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 good. So, uh, sandalschurch.com slash marriage, or okay. you can go to the menu, that go find the marriage page. On the marriage page, there's a section that says uh, sign up uh, on the marriage team. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just an inquiry form. And it there's a lot of questions about how you want to serve. Uh, we're ready. And okay. we're actually ramping people up as we yeah. speak. But the, the one of our primary initiatives is really to build up healthy, solid teams at each campus uh, so that we can really dive into marriage and, mm. and just help people. We agree with everything you said about marriage is the most important earthly relationship. Uh, there's lots of co- comparisons about our marriage and our relationship with God Amen. in the Bible, and they're profound. Uh, and we really need to, we need to level up our game for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, go to the, uh, was it sandalschurch.com? Is it forward slash or backslash? 
forward slash forward slash marriage, marriage. Um, and and sign up today and and just pray about it you know and mm-hmm. maybe you know I wouldn't do this without your spouse's consent so talk to your spouse first mm-hmm. don't be like hey honey we're yeah, on the marriage what we're team. doing <laughs> guess what? Um, yeah but uh, you know this is a, a challenging job it's it's hard to sit with couples that are struggling and so um, it's inspiring mm-hmm. when you see couples change but it's also heartbreaking when you see couples mm-hmm. choose self. Mm-hmm. choose sin and not choose God. And unfortunately that happens. And so you just need to, our vision is to be real. You just need to be aware. It would be so nice if magically every couple changed when we gave counsel, yeah. but um, you know, over the years that doesn't always happen. So uh, sign up today. And so we're going to tackle some tough questions with you guys today. And right. I just want to say to both of you, thank you so much. Just love you, appreciate you. Can't believe that God spoiled us at Sandals mm-hmm. and gave Thanks, us man. you. And so, um, a little secret: we think we got the better in the yes. deal. Oh man! But yes. that's, well, that's okay. that's both of us. <laughs> that's so, okay. um, just so so grateful for you guys. And I believe everyone listening. I, this is from the Holy Spirit. Marriages are going to improve. Mm-hmm. Couples are going to change. We're going to see miracles in marriages because of what God is doing. And so, I'm super excited. Uh, about the future of marriages at Samuel's Church. And so if you're discouraged and and I, there's, you know, we're tackling questions from couples that are discouraged and and marriage is hard. It's challenging. Um, I My marriage is challenging. And so I married a wonderful, amazing person. She is not me. And she has different thoughts, <laughs> feelings, beliefs, uh, understandings, interpretations, recollections mm-hmm. of even our history and things that have happened. And so we, we have to constantly work at that. And, uh, but it is worth it. One of the I think one of the greatest blessings of my life is when Tammy and I were in a season where not only did she not love me, I don't feel like she liked me. And that was really hard to come home from work and be like, okay, I'm not wanted here. I'm not liked here. And this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, it was overwhelming, but I'm glad that I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stay and I'm going to try to make this work. I'm going to do everything I can um, to, to make this work and watched God slowly, but surely make her feel safe, helped me to have some ears to hear. Cause mm-hmm. there were some things that she was saying that I thought genuinely thought were ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like I was just trying to be a jerk. I genuinely thought that's dumb. And so had to hear from the Holy spirit. Okay. There's some truth to what she's saying. And there's some harsh things that you need to look at in yourself. And I went, okay. And, and having to hear my wife and what she's saying and not dismiss. So yes. I'm a dismissive avoidant. That's mm. my specialty. I'm a recovering avoidant. Yes. I, I feel your brother. <laughs> yes. I feel you. and, and I didn't know that. And so, but being able to really hear her and, and listen to her. And so I just want to say everybody listening, there is hope. There's always hope. The, always. The, the beauty of Christianity is God can raise dead things to life. Wow. And so just remember that. Okay. So we're going to start with Cassandra and I don't know how you guys want to uh, answer this, but this is Cassandra from Riverside. Thank you, Cassandra, for sending in your question. The show is only as good as the questions you ask. How can I continue to show my spouse grace when they refuse to change a behavior? Wow, that's a kind of a wide open right. question. Yes. And we'll just see how you take off. <laughs> yes, uh, we talked a lot about this. And honestly, the toughest thing about a question like this is there's just not a lot of context. It, it could go a lot of different mm-hmm. ways. So uh, for example, Tammy and I see couples every week as marriage coaches. We saw a couple couples last night. We're with them. We can hone in on those things. So these are sort of general questions. We want to be as helpful as possible, but there's just a lot we don't know. Um, so for example, uh, I'd say, Cassandra, to start, I have questions for you. Uh, are you regularly being Christ-like to your husband? Is he regularly being Christ-like towards you? Uh, do you pray for him? Uh, that's a really important yeah. thing. We've been talking a lot about? Do you pray for him or do you pray with him? Uh, And what about his behavior? Is it sin? Is it addiction? Is it porn? Is it excessive drinking? Um, Is it flirting with other women? Like these, these details all matter. Um, Or or is his behavior that needs changing something more like uh, he refuses to take out the trash or, (laughs) or trim his nails or he won't brush his teeth or, you know, like these are all real problems uh, and not to minimize at all but it makes it a little bit tough. So we're just going to sort of assume the the worst case scenario, which is that he refuses to change uh, his sin, which we're going to say is porn. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a common problem. Uh, we deal with couples all the time that have a struggle. Uh, it is an addiction. There's mm-hmm. things firing mm-hmm. off in your brain and it is a very, very addictive mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, it'll it's a marriage destroyer. It will yes. really hurt a lot of people. 
So I think the question is, can you still love him while learning to have healthy boundaries? Uh, and that's tough. It's really tough because we, we all want to love with conditions. Yeah. Um, we talk about healthy boundaries a lot. Healthy boundaries means uh, he's responsible for his feelings, emotions, and actions, and you're responsible for right. yours. Uh, it doesn't mean you condone his behavior. It doesn't mean you're a doormat and you mm. just let him do whatever he's going to do. But regardless of what season he's in, uh, Cassandra, I would encourage you, uh, pray for him, get a group of people, pray for mm -hmm. him. Um, God's love changes people and, um, <clears throat> yeah. pr prayer changes people as well. Um, so lots of, lots of nuance here. Don't get stuck, uh, in this place. If you need help, get help. There's good people. Uh, if you're at Sandals, uh, reach out to the marriage team. There's marriage mentors at most of the campuses. Mm -hmm. Um, and really that's part of why we're here. We're, mm -hmm. we're elevating the conversation of marriage and we're saying, if you are stuck uh, yeah. or you feel stuck, don't stay mm -hmm. there. Tammy's probably got some great stuff. The only thing I would want to add is if you are changing yourself, at least 50% of the problem begins to change. Amen. So what can you do to show grace if he's refusing to change is take all that energy and start changing yourself. Dive in. What are you, how am I contributing? Is there any way I'm contributing to what's going on? Mm. And it will become more clear to you what you need to do next. Sometimes that is the best way to show grace, at least pour into yourself, yeah. become more self-aware and begin to change. Because like I said, 50% of the problem begins to mm -hmm. subside. Yeah. And so, so man, this, this is so good. So I would say two things, Cassandra. And again, I just agree with what Brad said. I, I don't know your whole story. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know the specifics here, but I would say generally speaking, this is, this is, this is generally, okay. These are percentages. That, that means this is not always true. Generally speaking, women are more dissatisfied in marriage yes. than men. Um, two, some, two to three points yeah. to, to be specific. Okay. Less yeah. Satisfied. And so yeah. some of that's just right. The way that God has, has created women. So, right. You give birth to a spouse. So you're more concerned with, um, dangers to the children. So there's a biological reason for this. So, so just know that, you know, women tend to be more critical and negative. And so I would just say as a woman, am I being overly critical? And then the next thing I see this all the time. I don't know if you guys see this. But women tend to stop being the wife and become the mother. Yes. And then now all you're doing is so you're combining the critical spirit with the mothering spirit, which is the way you love. But, you know, a great way to let a man change is let him let him face the consequence mm -hmm. for his yeah. decision. So instead of saying, hey, if you do this, let it let him experience that. And um, and I know that's hard and I know that's scary. But if you keep rescuing him, he'll stay a child. That's right. And so uh, just invite him to be a man. And that's scary yeah. because he may make Some a big mistake. Yeah. And so, but the only way I see men change is when they face consequence. I just, I don't see most men change by correction and nagging. It's, they, they screw up their life and there's a consequence for that. Um, and, and that's just how they grow up. And, you know, it's with, with my wife and I, with our son, I just kept saying, you got to let him feel the pain yeah. for the decision because one day he's going to be a leader of a house. And so we can't keep rescuing him from these situations. And the, the problem is, you know, and you guys were parents when you have means to rescue. Yeah. It's hard not to rescue. Mm -hmm. And so Cassandra, I don't mean that to pick on you at all, but you sent the question and I love what Tammy said. I'm at least 50% of the problem. And, and, and I just hope, guys, you hear why Tammy is such a gift to our church <laughs> because that's wisdom, Tammy. It's wisdom. And so um, I think so many of us want God to change our spouse. And what we need to say is, God, okay, what, what can I change? Absolutely. Yeah. What can I change to make this better? So Cassandra, we'll be praying for you. And thank you so much for sending your question. And, and for those who are sending the question, just give us more details. Um, yeah. that, that's helpful. And they'll summarize it. And um, you can give us details that are private that you don't want us to publicly air, but so that we know when we're speaking to this issue, so you don't feel embarrassed. You want to say something? Can I add one more piece yeah, to yeah. that? Uh, because I feel like this covers so much ground. And Tammy and I talk with couples a lot about the fact that it's easiest to see your spouse's flaws. It's more effective to identify and work on your own. And that applies to so much. And I actually think that ties well mm -hmm. into uh, Matthew 5 uh, about the the plank in your eye. Yes. Uh, it, it's really just another version of the same story. Yeah. It's easiest to see the things mm -hmm. that your spouse is doing wrong, mm -hmm. but it's most effective to identify mm -hmm. and work on your own. So that I think that would be yeah. helpful as well. Yeah. So, oh man, great question. Okay, this next one's tough. <laughs> David from Reno Valley. David, I just want to say thank Thank you for being so real. And this question, my heart just goes mm -hmm. out to you. My wife of five years told me recently that she wants to see other people. 
She has shared that she's no longer interested in me physically or emotionally. Soon after we found out that I was unable to father children, I'm meeting with a counselor, soul care, and we're doing couples therapy. How can I find grace for her and peace for myself? And how far should I extend her grace? Wow. David, mm -hmm. I love you, brother. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. What do you guys say for this? It's a hot potato. I'll just. It's okay. It. We're ready okay. for it. You, you got the hot potato? Yeah. Sure. All right. yeah. <laughs> Take it. Sounds like you're making the right decision. I always say fight for your marriage. All right. That's what you're going to do. At least you're going to try. You won't have regret if you're going to yeah. at least say, I'm yeah. going to fight for us. Yes. Amen. Which I love that. It's always the right decision. But what stands out to me first, David, is just the heartbreaking news of you not being able to father kids. I'm mm. sorry for that. That is heartbreaking. It sounds like you don't even have a chance to grieve that yourself mm. because your wife is you're grieving something else as she's going out trying to figure out how to manage her own pain in this. And so it sounds to me with the little context we have here is that you both need to sit down and grieve. Mm. Now, we don't have control over her. You're mm -hmm. the one writing in the question, David but at least that's something you need to do either with her or without her is to grieve this loss in your life. But it's possible that with the snippet of the story that you're sharing with us is that she might be avoiding this pain, this mm -hmm. grief by covering it with a, a, a temporary bandaid of, you know, seeing other men, getting attention. Um, it just all goes away. The pain goes away for a short time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when she's with you, she's reminded of this loss. Um, mm. So the grief is hard. I think you both need to hopefully come together with a counselor, if you're seeing a counselor together and be able to go through that together. Um, hopefully that will bring some closure and some um, ability for you guys to move forward with what that means for you and your marriage. Um, but when you are grieving this, you need to, to know that you need to seek out safe places, you know, other men, um, for you to seek guidance from or family or friends that are safe. Um, definitely not with other women. Mm. Uh, and the grace you show her is allow her to grieve. She might be sad. She might be mad. Yeah. She might blame, but you just don't take it personal. Mm. This is about her grief. Your grief is separate, but yet it affects both of you. Um, so the other thing you could do is maybe be praying for her. Mm. Um, pray uh, is a, praying for her is going to be a very selfless thing mm. to do. Um, you're going to be able to just reach, pray over her, be reaching for her, checking in on her, even though you know you have your own pain, but you're asking how yeah. to show her grace. Be selfless at times and just reach for her. How are you doing with this? Let her get it out. She needs that safe place because those other men aren't going to yeah, let her no, talk about um, that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so sorry. I mean, you know, I mean, when we get married for better or worse, this is, this is part of the worst. Mm -hmm. And it's what I think so many couples, you know, oftentimes when we think of marriage, we think of romance, all the things we'll do, all the places we'll go, but we don't think about sharing heartache, sharing disappointment, sharing illness. And, you know, this is a, this is a big part of that. You know, I'm watching my parents go through yes, you are. Uh, dementia mm -hmm. and I'm watching my dad process this yes. and I'm watching my mom grieve yes. this and it's really, really hard. And so, you know, all married couples at some point in time, there will be a physical breakdown that affects our intimacy, affects mm -hmm. our, the way we relate or talk and we need to prepare for this. And I think you want to jump in, but I just want to say this to all of our single couples. I am seeing this with men on a regular basis, having trouble with kids. And so, uh, low sperm levels, unable mm -hmm. to do this. And, and one of the things that I just start telling single guys is go get checked. Mm -hmm. No upfront, because I think that's a much healthier place to be in marriage to say, look, I have a, a low sperm count. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that going to be a problem? We're going to have to do fertility for both men and women because the rates of infertility are skyrocketing mm -hmm. even amongst young people. And, um, you know, I, I just, if I was a young person today and I'm, I'm in my twenties, it's something I'd want to know. Because that's really hard to process after the fact. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't produce sperm, mm -hmm. and you know they don't, they don't know a lot of the reasons why this is happening with young men. And so, you know, David, um, I'm sorry for you, but you're not alone. There's a lot of guys yeah. at our church mm -hmm. that are going through this. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, David, I wish we had a couple hours with you and your wife uh, that we could yeah. we could break this down. But one of the things I would want to press into is uh, God's intended purpose for marriage. Yeah. Uh, we talk about this a lot, and people don't think about it a lot. I love the way you ask the question about uh, prayer 
a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, what is the purpose of prayer? Let's start there. Yeah. Same thing with marriage. What is the purpose of marriage? Let's start there. Um, some of that purpose, some of it is to have kids. Yeah. Uh, but there's lots of other purposes too, and maybe bigger in some ways. Yeah. Um, so again, when you can discover those things together, what's the purpose for marriage? Uh, what's the purpose for sex or phys physical intimacy in a marriage? There are purposes and um, it looks like the way things are going here, they are running from those purposes instead of pressing into them. So that's the conversation I would love for you and your wife to have. Mm. Uh, God's intended purpose for marriage, for physical intimacy, um, and for the rest of your lives together. How do you honor God yeah. with that time that you have? So Yeah, that's great. There's one last point if I can make yeah. on I, I missed it, is I don't want to miss the point that she's going out with other men and we're not condoning that at yeah, all yeah, as no, a, good word. A, a right decision for her. And that's why I was talking about her avoidance. But because you asked, how can you show her grace, David? It's just don't condone what she's doing, but press into yeah. letting her grieve. Yeah. And I would say that to all of our listeners, the worst thing that you can do if you're having intimacy issues in marriage is involve someone else. Right. Like, it's just like this idea that somehow another warm body is going to fix the problem mm -hmm. in my marriage bed. It's not. It's going to destroy it. Absolutely. And so, um, you know. We just need to understand that, you know, Hebrews 13 says that God will judge those who defile the marriage bed. Oftentimes we think of that in the future, but, there, but there's actual consequence in the here and now. And it's just so, so difficult. So I just would be encouraging her to process that grief and frustration mm -hmm. in a much different way. Safer. All right, let's, <laughs> let's jump into Selena, mm -hmm. uh, Selena uh, from Instagram. So thank you again for everybody who sent their questions on Instagram. And, and we got so many great questions. We're great not going to be able to answer all of these, but I think this is a huge one for married couples everywhere. Is marriage supposed to take precedence over our children? Mm -hmm. I think she knows the answer. She says, if yes, that is so hard. What does it look like in daily life? You guys survive kids, mm -hmm. you <laughs> yes, know, tell us, did. come on. Yes, we did. So first of all, the answer is yes. Yes. All caps, five yes. exclamation marks, yes. lots of emojis. Yes. yes. Marriage should, should take precedence over children. Uh, so glad the question was asked. Uh, I would ask a couple questions that I think will be helpful. First, I would say, what do your kids need most? Mm. They need love from you. Where do you get that? Where do you fill your love tank as, as a mom? as a dad. Uh, some of that hopefully is from each other and mm -hmm. that's a healthy place to start. Uh, what do you and your spouse need most? You need deep connection. Are the kids getting in the way of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we were uh, looking through these questions, we actually saw another question on Instagram last night uh, and it was uh, one mom was saying that when they try to hug, their kids will push, yes. them, push them apart. Yeah, you I saw, saw that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, of course they you know, do. I, I was like, who is that? I, I need to talk to them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, true story about us uh, is that we used to have a pantry in our kitchen and uh, sometimes we just needed a minute. We needed a minute to connect. When our kids were young. We, yeah. we needed a minute to kind of remind ourselves why we were in this fight and what it was all about. And and we would honestly, tiny little pantry, you could barely fit one person, but we figured out how to fit two in there. Yes, amen. You're, you're judging me right yeah. now. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm envious. <laughs> yeah. So so we would go in the in the pantry and just have shut a the door. few minutes. Yeah. We'd shut the door. Uh, the kids knew that we were hugging in there. Yeah. You know, we weren't doing anything gross. We were just yeah. connecting with each other, taking a deep breath. Well, they thought hugging uh, was gross, <laughs> yeah. but that's okay. It's a good thing. Yeah. But you know, the, the point is that the thing that kids need most, right. the, the thing that kids need most is a mom and dad that are deeply in love and committed to each Amen. other. Amen. That's it. Yeah. So whatever it takes for mom and dad to do that, to connect well, uh, to stay on the same page. Um, yes, that comes first because that's what your kids need. It's easy uh, to believe the myth that my kids need me the most right now. We'll put our marriage on hold. We'll get yeah. back to that later. Don't make that mistake, friends. Don't yeah. don't make that Think mistake. about we just went through a really hard time. COVID. All mm -hmm. right. And so everybody had to figure out how do we get through these stressors as an individual, as a couple, as a family. And so when stress hits, mm. what's a better way to survive than in your healthy mm. relationship, in your marriage, right? If so, you are showing your kids when you put your marriage first, that you're showing them how to do life no matter what comes your way. Because if you have to, if you have a spouse and you can go home and you can cry, you can laugh, you can celebrate, you can grieve together, you can get through it. But if you're, if you're solo and you're, you just have your kids or, you know, you have a marriage, but it's not healthy and you just have your kids that mm -hmm. you can go to. At one point, you're going to be a burden to them. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Teach them how to do life by how to have a healthy relationship 
first. Yeah. The best gift you can give your kids is two parents that love each other. Yeah. I think what it's doing is, you know, she said, you know, why is it so hard? It is hard. It's, it's almost always Selena hard to do the right thing. Yes. You know, um, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not hard to eat junk food. It is hard to put broccoli on your plate and get it down. Okay. <laughs> that, that is difficult. And so, um, you know, that's why Jesus says narrow is the road that leads to life. Life giving things are often hard things and the things that destroy life are the easy things. And so what I would just say is, you know, get with your husband and say, look, I feel like we need to figure this out together. What are some things that we can do where we have our time date night, um, limiting kids activities, especially when you have multiple kids on multiple teams on multiple sports. Like we just made a decision. Our kids aren't going to be Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to raise Olympic athletes, but what we are going to do is, um, we're going to raise kids that love Jesus and know God. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I watch parents literally, I hear it all the time. I feel like a taxi cab. Well, I, or an Uber, I, I would change, I would change my life because you don't have to do everything and you can lose. But you guys know when, when my son moved out, we were empty nesters, Tammy and I went to counseling because even though I'm saying these things, we, we had prioritized our kids more than we, we should have. And we needed to get back to, okay, who are we? And, um, that's just so important. So, mm -hmm. all right. Good number point. four, Christine from Huntington beach. Oh, I love Huntington beach. I wish I lived there. <laughs> so Christine, I'm mm -hmm. jealous. Okay. After my husband got sober. Wow. This is a great question. Mm -hmm. I still find myself on edge around him because of the way he used to make me feel when he drank. I also suspect that he resents me for his sobriety. Wow. There's, there's a lot here. Mm -hmm. How does Jesus want us each to handle our feelings towards each other as we both begin to heal from that time in our lives? Christine, thank you. Gosh, mm -hmm. this is so raw. Um, who wants to go with this one? I can start. First, I'm so glad to hear that your husband's sober. Yes. Amen to that, correct? Uh, let me also say that start, let me start to encourage you by managing what's within your control which is your emotions, not his. Mm. Now you talked a lot about feelings here. Now, remember when your husband was an alcoholic, you basically had to become an expert at reading his emotions. Mm. Yeah. That's normal in that type of situation, but it's changing. And now you need to figure out what is your new normal? What do you do with your emotions? Um, like I said, you had to figure out what he was going through, what he was feeling, maybe walking on eggshells that is changing and maybe it's time for you to change as well. Be thinking about what is that feeling that you felt when he was an alcoholic? You mm -hmm. had a certain feeling. Is this a feeling you've had for most of your life, maybe even before you were married? Maybe that it's just coming out. Now all that's changed, but you still feel this way. Is it that you maybe felt invisible, mm -hmm. unimportant? Maybe you felt like he was trying to avoid you. Maybe you felt blamed for the problems. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it has deep roots. It does. It has deep roots in him and it has deep roots in you and it's affecting your marriage. Um, but what you need to focus in on is what can I, what can I do with the emotions that I'm feeling? Again, pour into yourself, mm -hmm. your own healing. How was I contributing to the dance that we had, um, mm -hmm. the unhealthy dance we had while he was drinking, how I was surviving, coping. I don't need to do that anymore, but why am I still feeling this way? It's a deep rooted dive into journey that you need to take that you will be glad that you did. Yeah. That's a great that word. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Can we put a picture from my head on the screen? No, we can't yeah. do that. <laughs> so I wish we could. There's actually an old cartoon uh, that is, uh, it's, it, it's used to reference alcoholism a lot. Yeah. And basically there's a, a older couple and they're coming out of a storm shelter and there's just complete devastation all around them. And, uh, you know, he, as the AK, you know, alcoholic was, was saying, Hey, look, ma, the storm stopped. Everything's fine. Yeah. And she's looking around at the devastation. Yeah. And so it's sort of the same picture that it takes time to, to work through that devastation. Mm. Uh, once, once somebody says, Hey, I'm, I'm sober, I'm not going back to alcohol. That changes the trajectory of the way things are going, but they're still a mess. There's still a lot to clean up. There's still unhealthy relational patterns. There's still a yes. dance that's not at all healthy. And those things take time. So the hope mm. that I would want to give here is, uh, continue in that process. Mm. Um, have somebody that's uh, good at doing this walk alongside you and walk with you. Uh, it is a challenge. It can be done. We've seen it done a hundred times 
times or more. Uh, and it's worth it because what's on the other side is an incredible God honoring story. So don't give up, stay mm-hmm. with it. And I would just say, Christine, I think one of the healthiest things that you can do, as long as you feel safe, I would just ask him, do you resent me for your sobriety mm-hmm. rather than trying to guess feelings? Because that's what you were talking about, Tammy, when he's drunk, you're having to guess. So you're, you're doing all the work of a two person relationship in your head. You and so go. part of your healing is instead of having to work it out because he's drunk, now he's not. And you can actually ask him, Hey, do, do you resent me? Mm-hmm. Because, because here's the thing is, uh, oftentimes people that, you know, are drunk there, there's a, there's a part of them that are, excuse me, alcoholics. There's a part of them that are more fun. They're more relaxed. Mm-hmm. They have less, less anxiety. There's a reason they're drinking. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he now has to process anxiety, stress, and emotions without the crutch of alcohol. And so there's probably part of him that misses that. And I think an honest alcoholic will say, look, you know, there's 10, 15, 20% of drinking I really liked and miss. It's the 80% of the chaos and the destruction Mm -hmm. and, you know, all of these, you know, other things that go wrong. And, and let's just be honest, Sandals Vision is being real. The, people, the, the reason that people like to drink is because it lowers anxiety, gives them this feeling of relaxation, and they can be more free to be themselves. So alcohol is a lure because there's a part of it that's fun. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's the problem mm-hmm. <laughs> is we become addicted to that. And then, you know, you, you're just destructive in every other place. And that's unfortunately the challenge of alcohol is – you know, for some of us, we can't turn the fun off and then it just becomes a disaster for everybody else. And, and, and it just wreaks havoc. But um, that's what I tell my kids is, is my worry is that you'll love alcohol. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's my worry because we have alcoholism that runs in our family. Mm-hmm. And and when you love alcohol, you can't love anyone else and you're very hard to love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it just becomes too easy of a way to avoid yeah. real things in yes. life, like things that matter. And life is hard. Life is hard. And, and so, but it's worse when you're drunk. Yes. So, and also the alcohol helps you avoid emotions. Mm-hmm. So now imagine she's in this relationship. He's sober. She's having all kinds of feels in herself that she hasn't mm. maybe dealt with yet. And maybe he just, maybe he's showing frustration with not knowing to do, not knowing what to do with her feelings mm-hmm. and yeah. of whatever it is she's feeling. Um, and that's maybe what she's sensing from him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So be careful, like you said, with assumptions, because you could be filtering everything he says and does through a filter of saying he's resentful Mm -hmm. of me. You will definitely find it. You will prove him guilty before you could prove him innocent. Start looking to prove himself innocent. Do your work on the feelings, not his feelings, your feelings, don't assume. Do what Matt said. Ask him. Mm-hmm. It's a different yeah. marriage now. Oh, man. Okay, we'll be praying for you, Christine. Thank you so much. All right, last question. Uh, question number five. Ashley from Riverside. Thank you, Ashley, for this question. My husband and I are newly married. Congrats. So glad for you guys. And we both share typical household household chores. I have no idea what that means. But how should my husband and I navigate comments? Ooh, the (laughs) in-laws. Comments. Oh, I I love those unsolicited comments. Comments from my family regarding our roles in marriage. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like to say, Ashley, I'm so glad you've asked this question because other people want to ask this question. Uh, And to start off, I don't intend to sound harsh, but you did not marry your in-laws. You married your husband. Uh, Genesis 2.24 talks about uh, the man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one. One, Like, I think that's a really healthy picture of what that should look like. Uh, Don't mean any disrespect whatsoever to anyone's parents, Mm -hmm. but... We're in laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we are are those people. (laughs) (laughs) That's terrifying. Uh, But, you know, you and your husband are accountable to God for the life that you live and the choices that you make. Um, So the challenge really becomes how do you uh, respectfully talk to your mother-in-law about her having her opinions about your life. Um, but um, with that, what, however you decide to do that, just remember that, uh, that in Genesis 2.24, the man shall leave his father and mother, mm-hmm. the two shall become one. Uh, Matt, you can help here. I think the word one in Hebrew is ezer. Yeah. E- ezer, which... Echad. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't spit. Yeah. That's what yeah. it was. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> but I, did it spelled like easy, easy. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it's the word achad. Yeah. Uh, and it really means fused together at the deepest levels. Mm. So the you think of the idea of two people becoming one, husband mm. and wife becoming one. It, it doesn't really make sense, yeah. but they're fused together at the deepest levels. Mm-hmm. So in this in this instance, you and your husband really need to get on the same page. Mm-hmm. You need to be unified. Uh, it would be really terrible if mm-hmm. you were uh, fighting for your marriage and your husband was just kind of avoiding his mm-hmm. parents, uh, his mom in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you really need to be unified and on the same page and, and be one, be, mm-hmm. be one flesh. Yeah, well, that's great. I would just add, uh, don't be quick to cut your in-laws off yeah. unless you really sense that it's getting to a toxic level manage it keep talking keep you know going in there and saying this is what we prefer Mm -hmm. or this is what we're trying to do and make our own life um at least be like brad was saying be respectful don't start with cutting off at least try make a try to have a a family um, discussion um, talk about these things with them so at least make them aware yeah and i would say that um traditional roles, whatever that means in marriage are not helpful if they don't fit your gifting. So like, for example, you know, I, I care about my clothes and people always say, did Tammy buy you that? No, never. Don't buy me clothes. I like buying my own clothes. I like picking my, my own outfits. I like doing that. So no, and I probably won't wear anything she buys. (laughs) So that's just, that's just me. Um, but that's who she married. I do my own laundry. Like I know a lot of guys, they're like, I don't know how to use this machine. I just, I do my own laundry. I know, you know, a lot of people get in traditional roles with that. I do dishes. I actually find washing dishes very relaxing. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, mm-hmm. I don't know what like that is. Checking your brain into a different yeah, place. Yeah, I just, yeah. I, man, I, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of putting things away because I don't understand my wife's organizational scheme. And so, but she's, she's, uh, my wife, like the way she relaxes is she plays Tetris, like in uh, the game, in our life, she with furniture. Good? Yeah, she just moves <laughs> things into, but it's just, she has a spatial gifting of how things should be organized and I just don't. So, you know, I'll wash and then what I don't know where it goes, I just leave it there and, you know, because she's constantly playing Tetris with her house and it's, it's fine. So I just, I just don't buy into that, um, you know, whatever the wife's gifts are. And then there are some things like nobody's, get, uh, our dog poops. I don't know if you guys have a dog, but get a new, no, get a nobody's dog. gift is <laughs> scooping poop. So, you know, so we do that. And and so what I want to do is um, I want to be a partner to my wife. And there are some days where, uh, you know, she, she, it's not 50, 50. She, she, she's got 30, she's got 20, mm-hmm. she's got, t- she's sick. She's got 10, um, you know, and I, I gotta, I gotta go 70, 80, you know, wh- whatever I've got to do to help that we, we do that together. Um, like yesterday I was telling you guys, before the show started, I had zip. I, I, I had nothing. I was just fried. Um, and what that meant is I don't feel like talking. I don't feel like, like, uh, I just, I just was, I was empty. Yeah. And so, so for that, it's not that, you know, so anyways, I just would just say really, really look into what are my gifts? What are my strengths? And then are, what are the things that neither of us are excited about doing that need to get done? And then talking about that and, and, and working through that because, Marriage is a team, right? And so there are things that have to happen each week. And and how can we do that? And then I would just say, be really appreciative to the things that your spouse does that you forget they do. Because I think it's really easy to focus on, you know, the one thing that they Uh didn't do and you you miss the 10 that they did. Mm -hmm. It's just like... um, you want to smooth out some rough edges in your marriage, mm-hmm. affirm each other. Yeah. And for yeah. any, amen. And for anybody out there that's, um, you guys know Brian Burson. Yes. Mm-hmm. Man, I love Pastor Brian, a pastor of our, um, our Beaumont campus. Like he is just so wise. Mm-hmm. But I remember years ago, you know, he, he got suicidal. He just came to the end of himself and he actually made a list and he wrote out, what are the things that my family will need when I'm gone? Mm. Ouch. And um, things like someone's going to have to mow the lawn. Someone's going to, I mean, like, these are real things that wow. he did in his marriage that we forget. And he's like, I don't want my wife, to, you know? And so, and so what I would do for those that are considering divorce, take a hard look and write a real list. Cause, cause you know, when couples want to get divorced, there's nothing good about their partner. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, really? Yeah. You know, and so um, I was actually uh, talking with a woman in our church who just got divorced on the treadmill. So I walk on the treadmill backwards. Oh. <laughs> so old people think it's for our knees. <laughs> so people at the gym, like, what is Pastor Matt doing? It's it's very healthy for your knees to walk backwards without the machine on mm-hmm. pushing. Um, and so she's facing forward <laughs> and I'm facing backward and we're, we're talking and she just got divorced and she's just weeping. And I said, divorce sucks. It's really, mm-hmm. really hard. And what I wish she would have done before she took that step was make a real list of the things that your yes. husband does that she now like that. has to do because she was so angry at all the things she wasn't doing. She didn't have a list of all the things he did do. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I just went, yes. this is really, really hard. And it never crossed her mind. Mm-hmm. So make a list of the things that your spouse does that you forget that are so essential to life and then thank them for it. Yep. Hey, thanks for doing that. Thank you so much for doing that. I just, I really appreciate that so much because it's it's easy to be negative. It's hard to be positive. Yeah, yeah gratitude goes a long way. Amen. The truth is divorce is a lot harder than most people think. They think it's going to solve all their problems. And I'm not judging anybody yeah. who's been through that. Yeah. Uh, we're friends with all of them. Yeah. Uh, but it is much harder than than they think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, just one quick correction. You said nobody's gifting is picking up dog poop. Uh, true story. My brother actually does that for a living. <laughs> There's a, is, there's a monthly fee. I had no I, idea. You can't make this stuff up. No, I know. Who yeah. are you? Yeah. You married a weirdo. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, oh my gosh. I that is so weirdo. great. I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but that, yes. is, that is true. Yeah. Okay. Brad's brother. $10, we love you. $10 a month. Americans Dude, you, are lazy. Oh my gosh. Per, per dog, by the way. $10 per month per dog. It might've gone up with inflation. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. What a job. We're not going to, we're not going to plug him. But. I love you, brother. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening. Sign up for uh marriage if that's your calling. And if you're struggling, just know uh, we are here for you. We got marriage mentoring. We got coaching. We got all kinds of things that are happening. And I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do some kind of like marriage one day conference together yes. Yes. Uh, on a yearly basis because nothing is more impar- important other than your relationship with God than your marriage. Amen. So we're praying for you guys. We love you. I love the Millers. Thank, Thank you for you, being we here. Love you. And the poop scooping was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was my favorite part. There's I had, a, no, sound idea. Sound I had no idea. Yeah, I can't wait to see how they put that in the show. Okay. <laughs> Marriage and poop scooping. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Check out the debrief again next week. It's coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. My book, Every Day a Miracle, comes out March 5th. Please pre-order today. It is a book about a journey towards trusting God who heals inside and out. Thanks for watching the episode.